these two Anglo-Indian campaign chests were very likely both made in the same workshop in the Goa Malabar region of India, first half of the 19th century. And uh, we're very lucky to have them both at the same time to be able to compare them with each other. And I would suggest that they're probably two of the best quality Anglo-Indian campaign chests that you're ever likely to see. Certainly in 20 years or more of dealing in campaign furniture, they're the best quality ones that we've seen. So let's have a little bit of a closer look at them. So this chest is formed out of three sections and a plinth base. One, two, three. The top two sections have got linen press slides. So those are nice and practical for use. The bottom section has got if I can get the right key. Two, sorry, three drawers. So we've got two short drawers at the top with skeletal handles and one long drawer at the bottom. All very nicely made. This chest is made out of two sections with a shelving superstructure and a stand base on nicely turned and uh, reeded feet. And the top section is a secretaire. So we open up the cupboard doors. Take another key. and open the very nice, tight-fitting four, which comes down on these wonderful, great big quadrants, and that gives us our writing area. Below, like the other chest, we have got drawers. So again, we've got two drawers instead of three as the other one and good skeletal handles. All of the screws nicely lined up which is always a good sign of quality. And talking of quality, um, I think I really need to take the camera off the tripod and bring it in and really show you some of the detail which makes these two chests stand out. So let's start with a look at the brassware and firstly the handles. Now you can see they're a really interesting shape. The back plate is almost like a heart shape and you've got a lovely shaping to the handle. Now <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. These handles are really well made. Cast brass, really good quality, and exactly the same on the other chest. We've got lots of brass strap work on the section, and also good corners. Now, the fittings for the chest to unite the different parts, if I can just lift this up and get the camera in here so you can see so on the top of that brass corner there you can see you've got a rectangular lug which fits into a corresponding hole to the brass corner on the top section sticking with the brass work we can see it's nicely cut out for the door. On the shelving superstructure, 
we've got brass fittings, screw fittings to each section. And a good brass finial to the top. So that's made out of good cast brass. <laughs> really good weight to it. But while we're here, I mean, just look at the quality of this turning and carving. Much better than you'd expect to see on most Anglo-Indian campaign furniture. These rails are removable. We've actually replaced them because they were missing, but it's fairly obvious what they were like. So you've got a pin there, which fits to a corresponding hole. And this reeded molding follows through to the top as well. And that's a feature which we see quite a bit on this campaign chest. So the panel doors, I mean, this is what gives us a clue as to the origin of these two chests. So that's the secretaire chest. This is a three part chest. And you can see they've both got this nice extra inlaid decoration. They've both got um, the back of the panels on the inside, not an area you'd pay much attention to normally, uh, but they are both fielded panels to the interior as well. So they've not given the full decoration, but they've taken still a lot of trouble just to make those uh, pleasing on the eye. The escutcheons and the keys, um, wonderful shape. And we see that now and again on the better quality Anglo-Indian campaign furniture. And to a three part chest, we can see the same. Edging to the doors, a brass strip. Again, a brass strip. The top and side edges of the doors are nicely finished just in a section of wood just to finish it nicely and if we have a look at this one we can see the same to the interior So, lovely strong butterfly hinges for the four. <coughs> These little ring pulls, the knobs, if you have a close look at that, they're actually fac faceted. So, quite a lot of extra trouble taken in making those. Again, we've got this ebony edging just to finish off and set the drawers nicely. A little drawer for inkwells and a pen tray, but again, reeded top edge, nice attention to detail. This section here, which you would expect to be plain on most chests, that's also been carved with reading as well. So again, lovely detail. These little corner sections, beautifully carved and shaped. And again, the pigeonholes as well. Really, really top, top quality. Now this chest belonged 
to General George Mackenzie Stewart. And uh, it came down through the family. I'd been in the family um, since he bought it. And he joined the Honourable East India Company in 1802. Um, became a Major General 1841. And to the back of the chest, we can see his name, top section named number one, bottom section named number two. Again, strap work at the back as well. Just that extra detail and a lovely panel back. So I think he probably owned this chest before he made general, but we've got to go on that date, which is uh, 1841. <coughs> so, two exceptional Anglo-Indian pieces of campaign furniture. Um, first half, 19th century, one with provenance to uh, Major General George Mackenzie Stewart. The other name, the other one uh, unnamed, we don't know uh, the soldier who owned it, but both of them likely made in the same workshop. Just the quality of the cabinet work the similarities in the cabinet work and the metal used um, all point to them being from the same workshop. And two great bits of Anglo-Indian campaign furniture.